Hey everyone, you might have noticed a part of the game I got from Keymailer called The Last Shot being uploaded a while back. Whilst this video might not be super long, I do want to give a little first impressions type video to this and all of the Keymailer games I get going forward. The VODs tend to be about an hour long and when I am live I don't necessarily know how I feel at the time and it takes me a bit afterwards to formulate my actual opinion so I thought doing a small video sometime after the fact to go with the stream where I can really dive into how I feel is a good way to cap off my first look at these games. So as always my name is Awerka and welcome to my first impressions of The Last Shot. Once again, I'd like to thank Criteva for the key to the game. But what is The Last Shot? The Last Shot is a super stylish puzzle platformer set in a diesel punk world, a world that itself is at war. The story is told silently, with our protagonist's motivation, that to find his partner being shown through letters she sends to him, and the wider world building happening in the background as you go along. Now, I'll have to put my hands up from the start to say I'm really bad at platforming, but puzzles, that's where my heart is. I do love a good puzzle, and whilst I'm bad at platforming, I don't hate doing it. It just takes me much longer to do anything position-based, and I can't say position and I apologise. As of writing this, I think I might be about halfway through the game currently. I do hope to finish it, but as of yet, I haven't. Hence, this is the first impressions, I guess. Let's start with the puzzles. So far, i found them pretty simple. The difficulty in your game comes more from the fetch quests and the platforming in the puzzles themselves. There are various types of puzzles, from block puzzles to logic puzzles, and none will super stump you. Usually if you are struggling, it's because you've missed something you have to interact with or pick up that's blended in with the background, but when you have all the pieces, they fit into place pretty fast. What they do really well is make you feel like you've accomplished something. Puzzles can use a wide area, with you having to go underground or use levers to move things overhead. They can be as simple as finding the right sequence to push buttons. They work so well though because they are super simple. You only have two tools to use, a wrench and a hammer. You swap them around and use them to fix certain machines or break obstacles in your way. Movement is simple and whilst you do pick up items to use, there is no inventory. There's no inventory puzzles involved. It's as simple as picking them up and when you reach where it needs to be used, interacting with the machine or person and it will just do it automatically. It's that simple. There are no super confusing mechanics added on, you just have to run, jump, push, fix and fetch all the way along. It doesn't need anything else, the platforming makes the game tricky enough. So I guess let's talk about the platforming shall we? As I've said, the one thing you'll learn fast about me is that precision platforming is not a strong point. I will do it, I don't hate it, but I struggle with it badly. The last shot though never feels mean. I don't know if it's the game or just my gamepad, but the only complaint I have about the platforming is that sometimes the reaction the character has to button presses is quite slow. Some jumps I've had to make have taken precision to a, a whole new level for me. There was one point where I had to time a jump but any time I got too close to the edge of the platform, it didn't matter if I pressed the jump button, the game just did not care, and I'd fall into a hole. This was also slightly annoying, as the jumps kind of need a run-up to them, so on smaller platforms, for me, it was hard to get started with the run-up before having to jump, before the game just becomes unresponsive. Then again, it didn't get tedious. I never felt like it was cheap, and the checkpoints were pretty nice. When it goes well, it really feels nice, and when you crack a difficult section, it feels super good. That being said, my biggest complaint isn't even the platforming, it would be the items themselves. On stream, I stopped on the carrier pigeon puzzle. As to get past it, you have to pick up a fuse from one machine and insert it into one of the other two machines to start a pipe puzzle. The game doesn't really highlight a lot of the items you can interact with, so on stream I was just running around the place, spamming my pickup button trying to find anything to do. Off stream, I was just lucky to have run into it, I guess, and pressed the button by complete accident. It still took me a second to figure out what I had picked up and where I had to put it and then what the puzzle even was. But when I figured it out, it wasn't that bad. 
I got much further off stream when I was getting some clean footage for this video and only stopped at a precision jump between two ladders which I was struggling to even get back on the first ladder so decided it was time to walk away for now. Honestly it could have slightly better indicator for things you can pick up. It does have a hint system which shows up what the puzzle is about in the thought bubble but I do feel like there could be something small they can do to just make some of the items pop. They blend too easily into the background sometimes. Then again, as a point and click fan, I'm used to it. Pixel hunting at its best. Maybe? You might think, after talking about the gameplay, there isn't much to say in a non-verbal game, but oh boy would you be wrong. Whilst the puzzle platforming is fun, the entire game is just an experience. It is stunningly beautiful. The story of the world and the protagonist himself are never told to us. We know we're off to find our partner who has gone off to war, this gets shown through a bunch of letters that she sends in little slideshows of pictures. It works wonderfully to tell her story and show why we're moving along as we are. As we make our way to her though, we learn a hell of a lot more about the world than you'd think as we see streets full of soldiers keeping the populace subdued and focused on their work. I love the giant propaganda posters and the murals as you walk around the city. At one point I stopped to look at the backdrop because, to be honest, that is just worth doing at every point possible and there was a giant statue of the dictator being flown away in the distance. What our part in this war is, I haven't found out yet. We seem to be some sort of mechanic or engineer, but it's stirring to see us run through this world as devastated by wars, giant guns shoot out in the background. And these dudes, who look like the Brotherhood out of Fallout, march about. Them showing up and looking threatening after I set off a firework at a protest actually made me feel bad about setting it off. The protest itself was breathtaking to watch. The art style was rich in detail. As I said, you just have to stop and take in the sights. For a game with no verbal interaction, it seems like this pack a punch more than some long lore dump ever could. What I find fascinating is that this game didn't even need to be this richly designed, so amazingly detailed or so provocative because it is only a puzzle platformer. This world is so alive though. It is a real city. The background shows how lively it is. Its streets are full of people hanging about, talking, getting ready for work. In the third area, when I'm walking around the factory, there are literally people in the background just hanging out. Tiny little details like that make the world feel lived in and take you out of the puzzle aspect and into a world building exercise you weren't ever expecting when you pick it up. Looking at the first area alone, it becomes super claustrophobic when you drop from the roof level to the floor and seeing all these buildings built so close together, close enough that they're running clotheslines between them. You enter people's homes and into factories and offices and they look lived in and real. Trains run by, to get from one area to another, you have to enter it, pack trains and trams. This world has more life than some story heavy games could ever wish to have. If you aren't already just watching out for the world building in the background, you will when you realise that there are some great hidden references, like Sad Keanu sat on a bench outside the train, and these guys from the famous Lunch Atop a Skyscraper photo taken in 1932. There are smaller things like a room full of junk that hides some of the easter eggs, and as I've already said, if these guys are a nod to the Brotherhood in Fallout, then I'd be super surprised. The last shot does so much right, things it didn't even have to do, that you can overlook the small annoying pernickety things that might end up bugging you. I've called it an experience before and that is what it is. You want to watch the world go by and that becomes just as important as solving the puzzles themselves. I haven't even mentioned my favourite puzzle or maybe more of a scene than anything else where you get stripped down and have to shower. It is the tiny details like the curtains opening and closing as you move about that just shows how much love has gone into this game. Sadly for me though, this is the end of my impressions. For puzzle fans, I recommend the game. It looks to be a short but satisfying experience with oodles of charm and a uniquely bleak yet breathtaking style. Thank you again for Criteria for the key. Your game honestly blew my mind. I streamed this over at twitch.tv forward slash worker89 where I stream four days a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays and Sundays at roughly 1pm British time. We play a variety of games and generally have a lot of fun. A follow would be appreciated, but if my fast talking ways don't make you want to push that follow, my community are pretty freaking awesome and they would love to have you join them torturing me with stretching and doing my weights. A like and subscribe over here on YouTube is also super appreciated. 
and make these videos more as an outlet as I currently am unemployed and suffer from agoraphobia. So whilst they aren't the best to watch and I do want to get better so I'm sorry about all of this, I appreciate every single person who sits through them and gives them a watch. Recently I've got a key from Kimo for Brooke the Investigator 2 and did a full review of that game which you can see here if you would like to see another video of mine. But until next time, thank you so much for watching as always and bye bye.